In the last 50 years, industrial robotics have come to play a crucial role in many industrial fields, replacing dangerous or tedious human tasks. While the construction industry has remained largely untouched by the robotics revolution, a company in New York has developed a robot to increase the productivity of one of the oldest trades in the world, bricklaying. Take a look. It was back in about 2007, uh, Nate and I uh, were talking about our, our various uh, careers. Nate has spent many, many years in the construction industry uh, with a general contracting company, and, and my background is engineering, manufacturing engineering. And Nate really expressed the frustration and, and uh, what he saw as the inefficiencies on the job site, on the construction site. There's so much manual labor involved. Everything is a very uh, manual process, very slow process. When you look at automation and you, you look at factories and how they leverage automation and robotics, um, they're able to take advantage of the benefits that robotics and, and these autom automation systems can bring to the table. And one of the first applications that we felt was a great fit was masonry. It's a very repetitive process, very manual process, very predictable process, which is perfect for automation and robotics. SAM is, a, SAM is short for semi-automated mason. And uh, what SAM does, it works alongside the worker. It's not a fully autonomous robotic system. Uh, you can't set it up and then come back a day later and a wall is built. It's, it's very interactive with the worker. It's, it's a little bit of an interest, interesting space that we're in because we're not building equipment that's like remote controlled. You know, you're not sitting at controls driving uh, like a backhoe around. And you're not also setting up, again, a, a lights out factory where you just set this thing and come back a day later. It, it's really this in-between space. It's this in-between space of uh, you set up a certain workspace for this robot to work within. And then once it's set up, once you've defined the workspace for this, this uh, robot to build the brick wall, uh, then it can run fairly autonomously within that space. You need to feed it bricks, you need to feed it mortar, and you need to interact with it whenever it has an issue. It'll tell you. It says, hey, come pay attention to me, fix this problem that I see. And so it allows the worker to leverage some of their time and effort. They can set it up, they can get it running, they need to keep it fed with bricks and mortar, but then for the most part, the mason will follow behind the system. A lot easier on your body, first off, because you're not doing all the work yourself. It's just, it's just tiring on your body, really. Tiring on your elbows, your joints. Right now I have tennis elbow from handling a trowel. So it really just takes a lot out of that. Now my job mostly consists of tooling, making sure the brick are in right alignment. I'll eventually, every once in a while, I'll run up there and stock it. You have two guys running the system, the guy on the wall and the guy up there running the uh, pad and stocking usually and keeping order. Two of the biggest challenges that we discovered early on uh, was uh, how do you correct for the movement? When you take a robot, again, when a robot is typically used in a manufacturing environment, it's a very predictable setting around it. So it's bolted to a floor, it's, uh, it, it, it's on a concrete pad, it can drive around very easily, it can move around. When we take a robot onto a job site for uh, masonry applications, you're typically building vertical walls. So you're going up story after story. And when you get up in the air, you need a way to get up there. And, and what is used on construction sites today is a mass climbing work platform. When you mount our system to the, that platform, it's moving around. So it's like being on a boat. So you're up in space, and as stable as this platform is, it's still swaying with the wind, it's still moving as people jump up and down. So, I mean, when you're up there five, six stories, you literally feel like you're on a boat. So you're taking this robot, it, picking up a, a brick in this case, going to the fixed structure while sitting on this boat, so to speak, and trying to find the exact spot where it's supposed to put it, correct for that movement, and then place it there. Uh, the other major problem was how do we deal with the mortar? Well, when it first started, uh, most of the focus was trying to understand the properties of the mortar. So we were looking at mortar rheology, we were looking at what we had to do with uh, moisture content, anything that we can do with the mortar to have it work in our system. And the focus right from the beginning was to try to work with mortar that the masons are using. So we didn't target trying to create anything new. We wanted to understand what we can do with the existing mortar that they're using and understand the products or understand the different physical properties and control them and design them to work in our process. We're kind of doing the opposite of what masons do. Typically masons will put the mortar on the brick or on the block and then lay another block on top of it. We're applying it and we have to invert it and have the mortar stick in a suspended 
form. So from that point, we went on to looking at the process and trying to apply the mortar and see what we can do to make it robust enough to have existing mortars stick. So it's kind of a balancing act. We can modify the mortar to some degree with moisture content, but well, as much as possible, we want to make a robust process that works with the mortar that they're using in the field. In my opinion, it's pretty revolutionary. Uh, what we've done for really one of the first times on a construction site is we've taken a trade, uh, a, a value added process, and um, we've helped increase the productivity of that um, by actually perform, helping to perform that trade, taking some of the, the manual physical aspects out of that. I think that the transition that we'll see over the coming years as technology evolves, as it advances, uh, you will see a little bit less interaction with the system. The system will get smarter. The system will be, have, uh, it'll build its own intelligence. It'll, uh, there'll be other robots and other processes that help feed the system easier and faster so that you don't have to be pick, placing every brick on the system. Um, same thing with the mortar. But, but I think that there will always be someone there to help set things up, to help monitor. So eventually there may be a day when as this technology advances or other technologies advance, there may be one technical construction person that can run three or four systems. But I think there will always be a worker there.